Hi, everybody. I moved to a better location. Okay, so good afternoon and welcome to this week's live Q&A with yours truly. I'm really excited to be here. I have been working all week looking at all the questions you guys sent me and some of your older um, uh, introductory challenges and really trying to compartmentalize them into um, different categories so that I can answer as many questions as possible during this time. Um, I apologize that I'm in my car, but um, my house is being worked on. I know a lot of you know I'm um, renovating a house and it's almost done, but I had to be home to answer questions for the electrician so I couldn't be in the office um, and they're drilling inside. So here we are in the car, but actually I kind of like the car because it's the light is good and the audio seems to be good. So anyway, um, let's get right into it. So like I said, I got so many questions from you guys. Um, I think the first thing, so I, I categorize them and I think most issues and challenges that co the coaches are coming into this group with at least, um, let's see, there's one, two, three, four, um, big categories that I'm seeing. Okay. You guys ready? And I'm going to go into each one of those and give you my recommendations and, and give you a couple examples of questions because maybe they're going to be relevant for you. So the first really big issue that a lot of you guys are dealing with is confidence issues or rather a lack of confidence um, in your athletes. And so I'm going to give some of my tips for that. Obviously, we cover that often, but I want to talk about a framework for confidence that maybe you're familiar with if you've done a lot of my other trainings, but if you have not... Um, the framework, I think, is really helpful for you to understand a little bit more about confidence and the research behind confidence. Um, the other big sort of bucket area is focus, and the word that I use is um, athletes being present, or rather not being present. So um, a lot of that is like they're thinking too much, they're hesitant, they have a fear of failure, and obviously, you know, confidence in this is related, um, but I'm seeing a lot of questions or challenges regarding focus, presence, especially athletes these days with their phones and Snapchat and all this stuff. Like, how do you get them there to compete? Third bucket, excuse me, I put a bunch of things together, but I think they're all related. Parents, communication, and team dynamics. And the reason I put parents and team dynamics um, is because you can call this sort of like interpersonal challenges, right, of, of just dealing with people. Um, and for a college team, obviously the parents are going to be less important, um, hopefully. Um, but if you're in like club or high school or younger, then parents are really important. But the dynamics are all kind of the same, and oftentimes they're related. A lot of your questions were like athletes drama maybe, and then parents on top of it. And so they're related. So I've kind of bucketed those together. The fourth issue or bucket is general competitive competitiveness and mental toughness. Okay. So I'm going to give, I'm going to go through some questions for each one of those buckets. So I'll, re I'll review those. And as I'm talking you guys know I'm, I'm needy. I love thumbs up. I love hearts. If something I say um, interests you or you want me to go deeper, thumbs up. I know I'm on the right track. If anything's not re um, resonating with you, that's the word, um, put a comment and I can see those and I can go into a deeper, um, obviously, questions. I have some questions, but I'm certainly going to give some preference especially if they are related to the bucket that I'm talking about. For those of you that are on live or come in later, I'll come back on and answer some of the comments. Um, but any way that we can make this feel like a two-way street is helpful for me um, because then I know what you guys need and if I'm on the right track or if I need to pivot and talk about something else or talk about something more. So um, do me a favor and give me some feedback, however is uh, um, present for you, okay? So let me go over those four buckets again. Confidence, presence, and focus the bucket of parents, communication, team dynamics, excuse me, and then the bucket of competitiveness, okay? Competitive mental, mental, competitiveness, mental toughness. Is there anything, and is there any big thing that I'm missing? For those of you that, that are, that are watching, any big bucket that you're like, because I do think there's sort of like, there are some other things. This doesn't encompass everything. Um, so I'm interested if there's any bucket that you really think that I'm missing, um, oh, after those four. Um, comment if, if you do. Um, I, I do think that there are some other issues, um, but I would say the bulk of the questions I'm getting fall into one of those four categories. Okay. Confidence. One of my favorite topics. Um, 
probably the number one thing that I get calls about, whether that's coaches or parents. Um, and I would say the, the way that I want you to start thinking about confidence is not something that an athlete has to get or something that you have to give. Oh, Alan, why are you coaching bucket? Okay. So you know what, actually, Alan, that's interesting you bring that up because I was also thinking, you know what, I think another bucket, and I'm going to talk about this today is like what coaches need to do to put yourself in the right mind state to coach your best. And some of that goes into like your purpose and why you're coaching and sort of your, because how you interact with parents and how you interact with your coaches is obviously super important. That all starts on like inner or, um, your inner work, right? Okay. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, where was I? So confidence is, uh, what was I saying? No idea. It's just such a big, it's just a, it's such a big thing for my clients. Okay. So confidence is, um, the research shows is we can talk about confidence as the opposite of not having confidence. But the way that I really want you to think about it is confidence is the opposite of anxiety. So, and I don't mean anxiety in like the clinical sense. I mean like nervousness or questioning yourself or sort of those, that underlying feeling of not being sure and not trusting yourself. And so we have two buckets. So we have two mindsets. We have the confident, positive mindset and we have the negative, anxious mindset. And so confidence is not, oh, I know this, this is what I was saying. It is not your job to give an athlete confidence. That's not your job. But it can be helpful to teach them and help them remove the fear and the anxiety. And Alan, absolutely. One of the ways you can do that is help bring them back to the present moment all the time. Just keep reminding them. And that goes into the second pillar that I bucket that I was talking about. But think of it more as removing the barriers to confidence. So confident, you don't have to give an athlete confidence. Thumbs up. Thank you. But you can help them remove the fear. And there's a lot of ways to do that. You know, you can teach them positive self-talk. You can create a culture of um, failing is actually something that we, we look forward to because it's an opportunity for growth. Um, the way that you talk to them, obviously. And I, and I know so many of you in this group are doing it the right way. Um, you're not the, the coaches that are invoking fear. But, but there's always, and some of that fear is okay, right? We have to be a little bit hesitant around... Um, he hasn't done the right word. We have to have a, a respect for authority, right? I think that's really important in any aspect of our life, but certainly in, in the coach player dynamic. But how are you removing fear so that then when they're performing and they're practicing and they're pushing themselves, that they feel like it is a culture where they can fail? Because once you remove that fear and that anxiety, confidence has a place to grow. And I'm so hot, so excuse me. Um, okay, so... Confidence is not giving them confidence. It's removing fear and anxiety. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So, and I got a ton of questions about this. I got, um, our biggest challenge is fear of failure. We find our girls are afraid to put everything out there for fear. It might not be good enough. Um, I'm struggling to help my girls overcome self doubt. Many of our players are better, sometimes much better than they think they are. Uh, my biggest challenge is keeping confidence high. So, I mean, I could go on and on. I'm getting a million questions about this, and I'm sure that's something that you're struggling with as well. So confidence, remember, it's not, you don't have to give that to them. You're probably already trying that. Just help them remove the fear and the anxiety and the nervousness, because then confidence can come to the forefront. Okay. So that's the, the first bucket, confidence. The second one is, and let me just say about all of these, I'm... I'm inviting you to think of your coaching. Hi, Sarah. Um, think of your coaching and your approach to these as outside of the box. Because my guess is, is that you've already tried the typical ways. I know so many of you. You guys are already trying. Yeah. You guys are already giving everything you have to your athletes. Am I right? Like, the, you guys blow me away. Like the coaches that are in this group are, you guys are doing it the right way. That's what, why I love my job because I get to work with you guys. Um, so you've already tried sort of the typical ways. And how is that working for you? Maybe it's working for some athletes, 
but you're probably already struggling with some things. So let's assume that there is a better way that you, you don't have to do it forever, but let's assume that there is a way to do these things that is easier than what you're doing. One of my favorite quotes, I just, I'm going to steal this from this woman that I just met. She's like this awesome, badass entrepreneur. I look up to her so much. And, and I was talking to her and I was like, oh my God, you started this business. You're doing all these things. And like, how? And she goes, Lindsay, she goes, the wheel's already been invented. I just have to find the person that's invented it. And God, that like, that just stuck with me because, you know, and all the stuff that I'm teaching, I didn't invent any of it. I found the person that invented it and I consolidated it into things that I think work and I'm trying to pass it to you. But assume that there is a wheel out there that is going to be the thing that works for your team. And you have to be open to finding it. You have to find the person that has it. And then you have to implement it and give it time. You don't have to do it forever, though. You just have to try it and be open to it working. So I invite you to try a better way. Um, because it's, it's, not that, um, it's not that your way isn't working at all. It's that likely there's a better way. And it's not always the most direct way. I think typically, at least in sports, we, we've um, been taught like that you just go and you, you work hard and you just, you know, just keep working harder. And that's the solution. And in my experience, that's not the solution. So th let's think about going around to a better solution. Okay. So let's, let's try something new. Let's all think outside the box. And I think the thing that I just talked about with confidence is like that. Um, Alan, great. Always looking for a better communication tool or tools as each athlete understands differently. Okay. That's a, awesome. Courtney. Oh my God. You guys, Courtney Thompson in the house. Let's do this. Courtney. I wonder if I can put you on live. I'm really trying to do this. Uh, Courtney, I'm going to hold on, hold everything. You guys hold on. Everything. I finally figured out. Hold on. Courtney, are you on? And if you are, can I, um, can I live chat you? Courtney, tell me. Because I'm about to do it. I don't care if you're not wearing any makeup. I don't care if you're in the dark. Courtney? Can I put you on live? Courtney, respond. Okay. I'm going to wait. Okay. So we're going into presence and focus. And I'm waiting for Courtney to respond because I'm going to put her on live here in a second. <laughs> okay. Um... Okay, so I got the biggest challenge for me is definitely keeping players focused on the processes and not overwhelmed with outcomes, both at training and games. I think a really typical uh, issue. Um, biggest mental challenge is helping teach athletes how to block out the noise and, and what they can't control and turning stress, fear, and clutch situations into the, in their favor. Awesome. Um... Rashad, you just asked us today, what are things to do to prolong the eight-second focus attention span. Okay. This is a perfect one. What I'm talking about. You've already tried to get your athletes to focus with the typical ways, right? Like, I don't know, getting them to huddle before practice or telling them to focus or hoping that harder practices are going to get them to focus, right? You guys have already tried all that stuff. Has it worked? Maybe, but clearly a lot of you guys are still struggling with this. So what is a way outside the box that we can get our athletes focused? Pretend and believe that this is solvable. I've seen that it work. Okay. The one takeaway. So confidence. My one takeaway for you is work on removing fear. My takeaway for the presence and focus issue is it has to be a daily practice. There is no shortcut to this. Everybody wants the magic quick fix. You do. I do. Your athletes do. It does not exist for presence and focus. What does presence do? Presence. Alan, you got, you brought this up earlier. Uh, we've talked about this a lot. Presence allows your athletes to be in the present moment and let go of everything else. So you want them to not worry about you. Well, they need to focus on the present moment. They need to not worry about the stupid call the ref just made or this college scouts in the, in the stands. They need to be in the present moment. Um, they're worried about, you know, the overtime coming up or something in the future or something that just happened. Okay. All this stuff is distracting to them being in the present moment, having confidence and trusting themselves in, in competition. So how do you do that? It's going to be no surprise. I talk about this all the time. It's a mindfulness practice. I have a new training coming out 
it's not ready yet. Um, so I'll be talking about this a lot in probably the next month or so until I get it ready. I'm working on it right now. Nikki and I are doing a photo shoot and a video shoot on Friday. So I'm excited about that. Um, but there is no way around a daily practice. There just is not. Um, a lot of you guys are doing the braver. Can I get a thumbs up? A lot of you guys love this. You guys are talking about how much it is helping your practices. Um, the braver is awesome. If you have not done the braver, I highly, 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 highly recommend it. You can go to our blog, search for braver. It's B R A V R. If any of you guys have the link, yes, thumbs up. Thank you. Um, if any of you guys have the link, feel free to put it in the comments. Um, or if Chantel's on, um, that's a great place to start. That is a pre-practice mindfulness meditation exercise. Um, yeah, highlight reel and trusting your training. That's great for competition. Absolutely. Alan, thank you for that. Um, so that presence and focus again, you've probably already tried to get this. Um, and you know, I think the other thing with this is we all are stuck in wherever we're at. I am, you are, your athletes are, your, the parents of your athletes are. So we have to find ways to get out of that mentality, whatever it is. And mindfulness is going to be a great practice to get your athletes to practice focusing and being in the present moment. Um, again, everybody wants the quick fix. And uh, especially with the mind, there are no quick fixes. It's, I mean, you can have quick shifts. I see that a lot actually in my work, but as far as being consistent about your practice brings about consistency of the results that you want and the mind is no different. So, um, if you have not done a mindfulness practice as a coach, um, I definitely encourage you to, to try that and maybe we'll do a challenge in this group for that. Um, but anyway, so my takeaway for confidence is remove the fear. My takeaway for, um, my computer would open my, um, my takeaway for presence and focus, if that's an issue for your athletes, is you need to have a daily practice for them. It doesn't have to be all practice or training session. It doesn't have to take hours and hours and hours, but it needs to be consistent. There's no way around it. Okay. Um, parents, communication, team dynamics. Okay. I see, I see a lot of coaches. This group actually, you guys aren't so, um, you guys can, you guys talk about it, but you're, you're not as much complaining. A lot of times out in the world, I hear people like, and actually Jen, you just, um, I don't know if you're on live, but you just posted something about this. I hear a lot of people like bitching about parents and bitching about how kids are spoiled these days and entitlement and blah, 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 blah. I don't see that so much in this group, which I'm glad about. Um, but we all get into that mentality, right? We want to point fingers. We want to blame parents. We want to blame our athletes. So just for a second, let's get into a mentality of we have to work on ourselves and we have to create a space for them to, hold on, I got a, a low battery, of course. Um, we have to, it's up to us to create a space for, for our athletes and our parents to trust us. Okay. So that's a different, sorry, I'm going to plug my phone in. That is a different mentality than it's someone else's fault, right? Hopefully this worked. Hold on. I don't know. Hopefully that worked. Sorry. Um, leave it to me to have my phone die. Okay. Yeah. Chantel, you have to stop blaming the generation and start taking action. So again, let's think about a different way to look at that. So let's see the questions that are coming up. Um, my biggest challenge is the me versus we mentality for both parents and players. Um, I find the biggest challenge to be the parents and player drama. Um, Mary just posted this this week. There's some great conversation about this. How do you mitigate jealousy and complaining amongst parents and mediocre players? And again, I want us to stop. Okay. It's not, we can't, I want us to bring these things up, but I want to stop and say, okay, what can we do? And the one takeaway that I want you to take from this bucket is it is all about trust. It's all about trust. So a lot of times what I see with parents is, and some of us are parents, so we can relate, but, and even if you're not a parent, you can relate to the fear 
and the worry and the just negativity that so many of these parents can get into because this is their baby that they're trusting you with. And I think a lot of times, I've seen this in a lot of teams, is the, the parent and the coach are separate because, and I did this actually when I was a coach. I was like, parents over there. I am not dealing with your shit over there. But what I was lacking was they needed to connect with me to trust me enough to let go. And again, I think this is like the roundabout way. Um, and Joe Huck, I don't know if she, he's on live. I keep bringing up this article that he shared. It was a, um, a high school coach that that really did it a different way. And he started creating a dialogue with his parents. He was really clear about them. He let them in. He let them see that he loves their kids. And he let them see like everything behind the scenes. And, and he gave them ownership over creating the culture as well. It's a great article. I definitely recommend it. Um, so Joe, if you're on, yeah, Alan, um, they, the parents have to trust you enough to let go. It's not enough to just say, parents, butt out. Helicopter parents, you're doing it wrong. Cause I, I just feel like there's a lot of that. Joe, yes, Joe, thank you. You're here. Post that article if you have it handy. It was such a great article, you guys. I highly recommend reading it because this coach basically said, you know what? Putting him over there has not worked. So again, what's another way to do this? And he created this space of vulnerability. He even asked the parents what he could do better. Um, and so again, how can you create that trust and that vulnerability and that space within your team where they see you as a human being and you they see the, your love and the athletes see it too? So again, this bucket, all these issues that you're facing, um, I don't think this is a quick fix either, but I do think that the one thing that I can say about this issue is that trust is the backbone of all of it. It's the backbone of all of it. And I remember someone else quoted this the other day. They said, um, oh gosh, what was the quote? It was in this group. Um, it was something about like, if, if, if the athletes don't know if you care about them, they don't care what you say. Something like that. I'm trying to think of the exact quote. But anyway, basically to get them to listen to you, they have to trust you. So just take a second, no judgment, but if you're seeing these issues popping up in your team, what if it's something that you can change? That doesn't mean there's, that you're doing necessarily anything wrong, but what could you change about yourself or what could you change about the culture to make it so that parents and athletes are more on board and, and these things um, dissipate. It's not to say that you're not going to have like some crazy parent or some crazy kid in your coaching career, you, you know, that you can't do anything about, right? There are those situations, but let's first look at ourselves. Let's first look at the things that we can control and, and let's try to start there and create that culture of trust. Because if that's not there, you're always going to have these problems. Always, always, always. And we're going to be talking about it in the group and we're going to be looking for the quick fix. And we have to step back and say, okay, the wheel's been invented. And the wheel is trust and vulnerability and culture. And that takes time. And what can I do as a coach, as a leader to create that? Okay. So again, confidence, remove the fear. These are sort of like my, my quick hits. Confidence, remove the fear. Presence, focus, there has to be a daily practice. Parents, communication, team dynamics, bucket, trust. Trust, trust, trust. Okay. Competitiveness. I'm really hoping that my phone is charging, but I'm afraid to turn it off. So if I, if I lose you guys, I will be back on in a second. Okay. Um, competitive. Jen, you had some great um, questions about this today. Um, you had um, encouraging teens to keep up conditioning over the summer without mandating it. Um, your second question was up my parents, so I think that was in the previous bucket. Um, uh, 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 okay, and then uh, Rich, you had something about self-destructing when the other team takes a lead. Um, and then there was a couple other questions about like, how do you have competitive athletes like at the, oh, there we go, Alan, perfect. This is the quote I was looking for. The athlete needs to know that you care before they care what you know. Awesome, thank you for that. I was like totally stumbling over that. Perfect, thank you. Um, 
Okay, so there was a lot of stuff about competitiveness, mental toughness, end of games, believing you guys can beat teams um, that are, you know, better than you or close to as good as you. Um, and by the way, I'm coming up on my fourth bucket, so if you guys have any questions, I will answer them live as soon as until my phone dies. So if you have any questions, <laughs> feel free to put them in now. And let me see. Oh, my God, I have live viewers. Um, Sarah Morton... I see you. Okay, maybe I might be able to split screen you, with you. Sarah, can I split screen with you? Do you have a, do you have a question or a comment? I'm going to try this. You guys, I really want to be able to do this. Okay, Sarah, you let me know in the comments, okay? Um, okay, so this last one is competitiveness. Remo okay, so my, my, um, my quick hit on competitiveness is, again, removing the fear. That's what we talked about in the beginning with confidence. Competitive and confidence are very closely related because if you aren't confident, you cannot really truly go for it, right? You guys have seen this. You're hesitant. You're a step behind. You don't trust yourself. And how can you be confident and competitive when you're like that? You can't. So competitiveness, my quick hit on that is removing fear, helping your athletes remove the fear. Am I on live still? Oh, my God. Yes, I think I am. Am I on? I don't know why I just got... Oh, oh, Lord. I think I'm on. Can I get a thumbs up? Can somebody give me a thumbs up? Am I on live? I think so. Okay, I'm going to keep talking. I don't know if it's working. Yes, Joe, thank you. Okay. All right. Competitiveness. Thank you. <laughs> Removing the fear so that they can perform with their full self. Thanks, guys. Thumbs up. <laughs> and making sure that they have a future visual of what they are capable of. Okay? So we're all about being in the present. But we have to believe that there is, some, there is a better, greater, more successful us, a future self, that is worth working for. And this goes back to like very basic psychology of like, that's why it's really hard for someone to be the first person in their family to go to college because they weren't given that visual. So why would they study? They don't have any reason to get to that level. They don't believe that their hard work and taking the PSAT and taking the AP classes is, is worth anything. You wouldn't study that hard either if you didn't believe that was possible. You know, we all, for those of us that are hard workers, we take advantage of the fact, or we take for granted, I should say, we take for granted the fact that someone in our life taught us that if we work hard, this is possible. If we didn't believe this was possible, you wouldn't hard, work hard either. And I say that as a person that has been very goal-oriented in my life, but I feel very fortunate that someone has given me the visual of my future self. And sometimes that's me figuring out what that fit, you know, especially when I got older and to an entrepreneur and all that. Um, so we have to help our athletes have a visual. You know, sometimes we, if we, if you have lazy athletes, sometimes they're just lazy. But a lot of times what I see is athletes really just fearful or having a real lack of belief in themselves. Um, so Jen, your question about, um, how do you keep up with conditioning over the summer without mandating it? More specifically on that, I think it's really about creating that visual of what is possible. I mean, a lot in a lot of my, um, I have some, some mind-body exercises. And some of it is teaching athletes that, you know, if you're running suicides or you're working on the weight room or you're doing hill sprints in the summer, teaching them that that's for something. You know, does that guarantee that you're going to win? No, of course not. But let's anchor that to something, to a future better self. Because if they don't have the confidence and the belief that that is possible and that they don't have a, and actually what it really is, is if you really want to go into it, we haven't done a lot in this group yet on the subconscious mind, but that reminds me that I probably should cover that. Um, the subconscious mind is always moving us towards something. And if we don't Ha, it, that's that's always pulling us without us even knowing it to this this thing, and if we don't have that 
thing and that future self, if we don't believe in it, if we don't get some feedback that we're on the right path, then we're always going to self-sabotage, whether that's not working hard, whether that's quitting, whether that's being there, but just kind of going through the motions. Um, and so it's really important as coaches that we understand that about our athletes, that it's not, thank you, that it's not just about them being lazy and being, uh, you know, not competitive, that maybe they don't believe that that hard work is for anything. Maybe they don't really understand. You know, it sounds obvious for those of us that are older, like, duh, you're running suicide so that like in the fourth quarter against your crosstown rival, you have legs and they don't. Maybe they don't really understand that. Maybe they don't really believe that if they do that, that they can win that game or that they can be, you know, stronger and they can, and maybe their future self is just a more confident them. Maybe it's not about winning and losing. Maybe it's, you know, more importantly, it's about them feeling good about themselves and it's about them feeling like they accomplished something and that they went for it. And so my challenge for you, when you're complaining about competitive and no judgment, if you're complaining about laziness or not competitive or not focused athletes, have you set the picture for them? Have you helped them see a future self? And you know what? You might have to do it in stages, right? I mean, like if, and the, you know, the perfect example is someone that, like I said, their families, no one went to college. Maybe the first thing is to help them see that they can graduate from high school. Um, and maybe, maybe you play with it. Maybe it's them seeing um, that they could have a great paying job as an adult. And so giving them these little pictures, and, and one of them might stick. One of them might be too much. You know, if you talk to them about being a surgeon, maybe that's just like so beyond what they think they're, po they're capable of that that's too much. But maybe they can see themselves going to community college. And maybe they can see themselves buying a house someday. And, and so different snapshot and different pictures might be the thing that gets them to say, oh, you know, maybe I could study harder. And this is simple. This is simplified. I get it. This is an art, not just a science, right? I and mean, there's science behind it, but, um, I don't mean to sound that this is easy. This is not a quick fix, but again, the wheels out there, if you're having these issues with one or more of your athletes, maybe they don't have a picture of a future better self. Maybe no one Maybe, maybe, no, maybe their parents or maybe they just never got that message um, because there's nothing un, more demotivating than believing that your hard work is for nothing, am I right? So they have to have a destination and our job as coaches is to help them see that. Um, so let's review. And again, feel free to put in any questions, even if they're not right now. Um, I can come back and join later or um, comment later. So my big buckets, and thank you everybody for the questions. I will do more Q and A's uh, if these are helpful. So let me know if this is um, useful for you. The four big buckets, because I was getting so many questions, I put them into buckets, was the first one was confidence. And again, I said, think less about trying to give someone confidence and more about removing the fear and the anxiety, okay? Presence focus. If you're seeing athletes that, you know, their mind's thinking too much, they're all over the place, they can't focus, um, then work on a daily mindfulness practice. Do not complain about millennials not having any focus if you're not implementing that in your, in your practice somehow. Joe, thanks. This is great. I'd love to see you do it more often. I will do it more often if, if we have questions. So keep the questions coming. This is awesome. No, this is fun for me too. And um, hopefully it's a, a value to you guys. Um, but no, this is, you know, this is my jam. I love, I love Q and A's. I love talking about this stuff. So I'm happy to do it. Um, daily practice. No more complaining about focus issues if you're not going to take five minutes a day to help your athletes learn to focus. Okay? Period. This is, there's no quick fix for this, but there is a solution. And it's probably not the one you've already tried unless you're already doing this. Okay. Um, parents, communication, team dynamics, bucket, trust. It is all about trust. Look at yourself first. Are we creating a community and a culture of trust and vulnerability? Your parents are not going to trust you and let go of their little baby unless they are clear that you will love them and treat them fair and be there for them and all those things. And Alan's quote, 
I can't remember what it is again, but um, they don't care what you know unless they know that you care. I think that's it. So again, let's look at ourselves first, creating that culture. Yes, there are always going to be those annoying people in our life, but what can we do first? What can we control first to create that trust and vulnerability in our programs? Competitiveness and mental toughness. Okay, so again, my quick hit on this is remove fear as much as you can um, and at the same time, create a future self. Create a destination for those athletes. If you want them to train all summer, what is the fall going to look like? How are your, how are they and how is your team going to be successful or at least feel like you are did everything? What does that look like and feel like and taste like so that they can see a picture? Their subconscious mind has a destination. We can see our better future self. It's really important. A lot of us do that naturally, but don't assume your athletes are doing it. Okay, that is all I have. Um, you guys are awesome. I love this community. I love that you guys are sharing. Feel free. You guys, I don't know if everybody knows this. You guys can post anything at all times as long as it's not, um, you know, selling something because I don't want this to be a marketplace. But if you have a resource or you have a video that you like or you have um, a quote that you like or you have an issue or a challenge or a question um, or something that's really worked for you, you, or you've used one of our trainings or something else. And that's tip has like made such a difference in your athletes, in your program, share it. This community is for you. It is for you. And it is for all of us to learn and grow from each other. And I am learning so much from you guys. And I love that you guys are answering each other's questions and you're commenting and you're supporting each other. I really want this space and it is already, but I want it to just continue to be this, this magical place where all of us are working on getting better as coaches and as um, teachers of young people. So thank you for, for being here and for supporting that and for contributing. And let's just keep the positive vibes going. This is awesome, you guys. And I'll get on for another q and I don't know when, but um, let me know what, what questions you have and post them in the group and be a part of the community. Okay, guys. Have a great day. Take care. Bye.